methods using a linear regression model uh, will we take a look at it again and uh, this time according to the reference that is there mentioned uh, the fletch uh, fletcher that one uh, about uh, linear regression and in specific uh, there they talk about linear regression and the least squares method and there are a few more topics in that uh, page number 197 to 205 only uh, within these pages a lot of concepts are introduced uh, as uh, with regards to linear regression so we have to cover all of that uh, like step by step like take a look at uh, take a look at it again so this is why like i am presenting the linear regression problem using the least square method once again so i'll begin with just giving an overview of what i will cover today uh, let we will see Uh, how the linear regression problem will be defined some motivation for the definition like why do we apply a regression problem uh, for such a case then how do we represent the like mathematically represent the problem the linear regression problem how it is represented then i use uh, the ordinary least square method that is introduced in this text uh, in the reference text what is the cost function when we use the ordinary least squares like ordinary least squares will be like our uh, method for uh, finding out our uh, that will be our hypothesis for the model so how to do it with ordinary least squares what is the cost function involved how to apply it to a univariate problem like when we have one single feature and then how we apply it generalize it over uh, for multiple features what is a normal equation and uh, why do we have to do normalization then we will see some drawbacks of this ordinary least square uh, method when we apply it to linear regression and like in linear regression only what are the different uh, strategies that we can use to uh, like uh, tackle those shortcomings of ordinary least square method that is that will be, we will be talking about uh, regularization just a small overview we will not go, go into depth into regularization because in the text we are only introduced to these two forms of uh, regularization so uh, are we good with the good with this ma'am then we will then begin into the thing does anyone have any more doubts before we begin just let me know i i am not able to see the meet screen perfect so this you can start okay ma'am so we will just now go into the problem definition part uh why regression so first what we are trying to do is we are trying to estimate the relationship between the features and the target the features are independent variables uh, and uh, the dependent variable or the target what would we try to predict that is dependent on those features and uh, once we get a relationship like we come up with a very approximate relationship between the two uh, like mathematically and then we try to use that to uh, predict or estimate the value at some unseen data point what i mean what i mean by that is uh, if i have like a training set then uh, i can like predict the values in between that like if we uh, do for something like x equals to 1 x equals to 2 and x equals to 3 and we are given the uh, y values for that and if i have to find 2.5 i can do that that will be called interpolation and i can also do 3.5 that will be called extrapolation like outside my range uh, where i have learned so we can like uh, our motivation is basically when we have these independent feature values and the target values we come up with a relationship that matches like best approximates uh, what we are our data set and then we apply that same model to other points which we have not seen in the past so all in all we have to come up with some hypothesis function here i am saying f hat i am using the notation f hat because that is used in the text some text use h for representing hypothesis uh, so that is good as well but we are using f hat because that is what uh, the reference text says we have n examples n examples in the form of x i f x i means uh there are various x values we have n features uh, like n examples n training examples 
So for all of them, we have the x values and f of x i that means the y values. F is the true function. So y is the actual one that the actual value of uh, that at that point. So we have all of these and we have to like come up with something that takes these examples and uh, then what I mean in this uh, presentation, I have mentioned the vector space X to the continuous space R. Why do we do that? Because why uh, in linear regression, what we try to do, uh, like particularly linear regression, we come up with a continuous value. That means it is not discrete. It can it can be it can take any real value. So we have to uh, like come up with a function that takes all the features. It can be one feature. It can be two features. It can be three features. So when we have like mo more than one feature, we will for each uh, training record we will have like we have a, a vector of features right so that vector of features will have the di uh, that will lie in the ve feature vector space x so we have to map that entire feature vector for each particular such training example to some particular real value so uh, mathematically we will have to come up with some f hat that uh, maps the feature vector space if like if x is only a single feature we will have just a real value and if like uh, we have two features then we have r r square that will that means the 2 d 2 d real space so we will have uh, some feature one and feature two for each so then but then we will also again try to come up with one single real value so that is why x to r and this is just a representation of our uh, thinking that we will have some training set we will apply some learning algorithm that will learn something from the training set and then it will come up with some hypothesis in this in this hypothesis we will input some x and it will give me some y so that is our motivation behind it if we are good with this then i can move ahead to the representation part so in the representation what we actually come up with is we have like n training examples right so we have to come up with a plane and why am i saying plane because if we have only a single feature then we will have a like, like a line we have we can come up with a line that uh, like covers most of the training examples and that will be called the line of best fit and if we have more than one feature like if we have two features then you can like visualize that there are two features and with the the, with the very as the those values of the features vary the function values vary so that will be like a three dimensional thing uh, we will come up with a surface that best fits the data so if we have m features then uh, that will be a plane n dim m dimensional plane so we have to come up with a plane that fits the data points here i am like, talking about univariate multivariate in like at the same time because then we will go into the uh, each of the individual cases but here i am generally talking about like if x is a feature vector that has like m features like this this is for one training example so for one we will have all of these x values and if we put all of these x values in some our function the hypothesis function f hat we will come up with a linear uh, equation that will be beta naught plus beta one x one up to beta one beta m x m. So if we have only single feature, we will have beta naught plus beta one x one. So why? So when we get up to this point, that is where we call our uh, like uh, model. Let's say it is linear, and we are coming up with a real value. So linear regression. That is where the motivation comes in. So then we say that the real value of y is approximately our predicted value so uh, here i am what i am saying is there is some uh, there is a matrix or a vector we can say n n cross 1 uh, matrix or n vector so that will contain all these coefficients beta 1 to beta m and uh, because x is this feature vector if you multiply these two this is uh, 1 cross m and this is uh, m cross uh, 1 so that will be like this sum right here we can represent it as this x time x dot w and we will 
still be left with this uh, intercept term that is beta naught. So this is approximately, this is not equal because there can be error between our prediction and the actual value. So now just to make our lives a little bit easier and to account for this intercept term, we can, what we can do is, because there is no space in this feature vector space to like account for the intercept, we can add one more column in our data, in our feature uh, of ones on here, I am taking by convention on the left hand side. On the leftmost side, we take a uh, take up another column of ones, and then what happens is mathematically we transform our all the data sets uh, data set features into homogeneous coordinates. So we have like a column of ones. So when, once we have that, we, then we can like say that our uh, w, which will be these coefficients, uh, or generally parameters all these parameters this beta naught will also be like then consumed in w and then we come up with this uh, another simplified expression x times w so x is now this vector right here and w will be the column vector of uh, all of these coefficient, uh, coefficients and intercepts so in general parameters so once we multiply multiply all of them so we will come up with some value that will be our predicted value and why is the actual value that is approximately equal to this. And uh, this is for a particular training record, one training example. So if we have n training examples, you can say like the capital X uh, will be that matrix of all the features and uh, Y will be the uh, matrix or vector for all the Y value, like the target value for all the examples. So then we will have that uh, actual Y values are approximately the dot product of this all the training vectors uh, times uh, some model parameters uh, w so this is like the basic very uh, basic general idea of the entire thing that we are trying to do if we have like again i am saying if we have only one feature then this uh, this met this vector right here reduces to one and x1 and then w is then only contains beta naught and beta one so that will again come out to be beta naught plus beta one x so that is our model right here uh, is this clear up to this point uh, just let me know by unmuting yes okay so now uh, then we can say because uh, our and uh, this is this is why is also from our training set this x is also from our training set the only thing that is we do not know is this w then we can say that our entire linear model is parametric in w and that w is the finite number of parameters that need to be learned from the data it is not infinite because with these coefficients uh, we will have m if we have m features we will have m plus one such parameter so that is a finite number of parameters uh, the coefficient and the intercept and that we have to learn from the data and then i am like introducing this uh, representation right here that y the, uh, the actual values of y is equal to the dot product of x times w plus some epsilon epsilon is the error there is an error term so uh, because the actual value uh, is different from the predicted value with some error so that is what we call the residuals mm, like formally i am giving it another name the different error terms in that uh, vector if uh, epsilon is a vector of the error terms for each like uh, we come up with a prediction for each such training example and why is the actual value so there is some epsilon error uh, in each such prediction and i'm taking a vector of all of that because we have end training examples so all of those elements are called residuals or error now to come up with a very good model we should have y is equals to x times w right so our goal is to minimize this the values in epsilon to such a point so that uh, it is very very close to the actual value so to do that, uh, we will make it our linear regression problem that is our problem to like come up with some prediction into an optimization problem 
to minimize the errors and for that we have to come up with the cost function that I am saying is uh, j and that takes a parameter uh, w and we have to minimize this entire cost function and then take the parameters that uh, cause the entire cost function to minimize. Right. Once we come at the minimum point, like the minimum value of the cost function, we will take the parameters at that point and then we can use that and plug it back into this equation. So when we do that, we will have a very good prediction of uh, in when we have this some x, some features, we will multiply that with the parameters that we learned and that will be uh, our prediction and that prediction will be very close to the actual value. So this is our assumption, this is our representation, this is our problem definition. So this is what we are trying to do, like a, a different point of view to this entire problem. Now comes the method of ordinary least squares, how we can uh, like use this method in our linear regression problem so that we can come up with this uh, uh, parameter vector that is w that contains the intercept and the, all the coefficients. So this ordinary least square method needs us to uh, like understand some basic linear algebra, the matrix um, uh, like uh, the operations and all. So just a quick refresher, if uh, A is like a row vector like uh, A1, A2 up to N, if we multiply it forward with this transpose we will uh, actually have the square of all the terms summed up so that will be the sum of the squares effectively, just I'm representing it in this way. Then we have three identities that I have mentioned right here with, of course, they have some conditions. So if we have A transpose times B, it's, it will be equal to B transpose times A, given that both, both of them are of the, like the same dimensions. So that is there. Then we will have like, if a plus minus b, like if we just add two matrices and take its transpose, it will be equal to uh, the trans, the addition of subtraction of the transpose of them individually. And then if I multiply it and then take the whole transpose, it will be like the second matrix transpose times the first matrix transpose. So this is like very basic linear algebra that we will be using like to understand the ordinary least square method. The method itself now gives us the cost function and the uh, like the entire method to how to come up with W. This method was introduced by Carl Gauss and uh, there's a very important assumption and we are using uh, this ordinary least square method in this text. That is the data that we will use that will have a zero mean. That means the data should be in like a bell curve. It should be a normal distribution, a uniform normal distribution. Otherwise, uh, this model can give erroneous values. So this is an assumption that we have to use when we use ordinary least square. In this method, we consider the error terms that are the residuals. That is, of course, the like the difference between the delta between the actual value of x uh, actual value of y at a particular x value and minus the predicted one. So this is y actual minus y predicted. This I can represent it as just like this yi minus xi times w. Y because I just uh, gave this notation. I just propose that uh, this notation we can use. This is for uh, for one uh, for one record only. So one particular y value is uh, the residuals for that particular ith uh, training example is uh, yi, the actual value minus the feature vectors of that particular training example times the parameter w. Our job is to like consider the sum of squared residuals. That, that just means take the square of each such residual and then sum it up. That will be called the residuals uh, sum of squared residuals or residual sum of square. It is called SSR or RSS, uh, whatever you say. Uh, some text use the uh, other uh, 
um, the residual sum of squares. So in this text, we are given sum of squared residuals. And that we will take uh, as to be uh, to be our cost function. We have to minimize the sum of squared residuals. Earlier we had seen a case where we take the like the mean square error, right? We square uh, like uh, sum up all the error term squares and then divide that with the number of training examples. In this ordinary least square method, we are taking an alternative representation of this cost function just as the sum of uh, like we have to just minimize the sum of squared residuals and you forget about that mean part. So here, uh, just I'm representing that it is like the sum of square of the error term. That just means this big thing that yi, the actual value minus, this will be our predicted value. This representation, this means the in the superscript I have in brackets, I have i, that means it is the ith example and in in the lower uh, right hand side, it is in the subscript. I have written one to m. That means uh, this, these are the number of features, the feature numbers. So if we have one feature, it will be beta naught plus beta one x one uh, x only. Then we can have in the superscript i. It will only be uh, up to this term. Uh, two terms will come from here, and then we'll take its square. This is for the general case where we have m such features. Uh, then we can represent it uh, simultaneously, uh, like similarly as uh, yi minus xi in this matrix notation that I just talked about above. And because we have this thing that uh, a transpose a is equal to like the sum of its squares, this entire thing, why it is like the, uh, why is it a row vector? Because yi is like a real value only n cross one and this xi will be n cross m plus one if we take homogeneous coordinates and the parameter numbers will also be m plus one times one so that will come we will come up with a n cross one so it will be a column or a row vector so if we take its transpose and multiply it forward we will have the uh, all the elements squared and the sum of it. So we can represent this entire cost function as phi minus capital X times W transpose Y minus capital X W. In bold, these are all matrices or vectors. Uh, these are not real values. So that is there. So this is our representation for our cost function that we will be using in matrix notation. And in the ordinary least square method, we do not do gradient descent or uh, like any iteration. This is just oh, at one shot, we have to find the parameters W. In gradient descent, we did, we took several iterations. We have to define a learning rate. We have to do some iterations to come up with the uh, parameters that minimize uh, the cost function. Here, we have to do some numerical analysis and then we have to come up with uh, the parameters directly. So that is the difference uh, between the gradient descent method and the analytical approach. So uh, once this is done, we can then uh, go ahead to the univariate uh, linear regression. Uh, we are all familiar with this uh, because this is like uh, the error for a particular uh, term in a univariate case like when we have only one feature that is x so if we have some beta naught plus beta one why there is a hat at the top of it i'll come to it in a bit so these are the two parameters if we uh, calculate this part we will have the predicted value and this is the actual value yi so yi minus y predicted this was this is my error this is the residual the hat is there because these are the values of the coefficients or the parameters or in the intercept that compute the prediction. So for prediction, we use hat. So this parameter gives us the prediction. So we use hat at the top of the parameters also in this particular text even. In the reference text, we use hat on the parameters that give us the prediction. Now we have to compute these error terms, the sum of square of all of these error terms. So we will have a cost function that takes in the parameters what we give it beta naught and beta one and we compute the sum of 
uh, all the errors, squared sum of all the errors. Uh, that will be this term right here, y i minus uh, beta naught plus beta one x i. So uh, all that squared. These are the error terms at particular for each training example. There is error term. We sum of uh, we square all of that and sum it up. That is our cost function for the univariate case. Now to compute uh, our coefficient and intercept, we have to different partially differentiate it with respect to all of these uh, these two parameters we have done it in the past and come up uh, we had already come up with some results but our cost function definition here is like the sum of squared residuals and not the mean square error so we uh, if you compare this to that thing you will notice that there is a uh, n missing in the denominator that comes from the mean thing so once you um, like the partially differentiate this particular cost function right here uh, because there is a two in the front and uh, this term right here contains beta naught we'll have the minus one from here minus two and this entire term right here stays the same so this is the partial differentiation of uh, partial derivative of the cost function with respect to the intercept second this is the univariate case only so we will have two parameters so this is minus two times here we have this beta one with its uh, it also has a, a x1 xi multiplied to it so we'll have that xi outside and this entire term remains the same so these two are the partial derivatives with respect to these two parameters now we have to find uh, solve for uh, two variables and we have two equations so we set a uh, all of them to zero and then try to come up with the values for those two variables so if we set this first equation to zero so i set this derivative to zero so minus two gets cancelled out because of the zero on the other side and then i expand the summation uh, within so i'll have the sum of yi one to n minus sum of beta naught one to n this will reduce down to like the there is a one right here we take the beta naught outside so we will have n n beta naught minus sum of beta one x one so if you simplify this equation and separate out separate out uh, beta naught uh, because i just saw i just said that there is n beta naught here so n beta naught uh, if you take to the other side and divide uh, that both sides by n you come up with this particular representation that is the sum of yi minus uh, sum of beta 1 xi divided by n now if you multiply uh, 1 by n inside you will have like the sum of all the terms divided by n what is that that is the mean and similarly you can take beta 1 outside and xi uh, uh, the sum of x all the x values divided by n you will have so that is x mean so uh very in a very short way we can represent our intercept as y mean minus beta on x mean you saw that uh, we know the y values for all the training set records right we also know the x values in the univariate case for example if there is only one feature we have all the values for x and we have all the values for y so this is something that we know we can compute the mean uh, like outside of our uh, algorithm also directly we have these values so we have a numerical approach to this now now we only need to find beta 1 the other variable in this uh, equation so for that we set the second uh, the other derivative partial derivative to zero then uh, we have to like uh, plug in the value like substitute the value of uh, beta naught that we got that was y mean minus beta 1 x mean once you do that uh, then you expand the summation uh, inside and then separate out beta 1 then you will have this uh, entire term that is written in the center that is uh, the sum of from 1 to n xi minus x mean this x mean again comes from that beta naught we had x mean right here so this x mean comes from there yi minus y mean divided by n if you see this like in some statistics books and all this term is the covariance of uh, between the x and y so this is the covariance between x and y 
and in the denominator you will have like uh, x i minus x min and the all square and this term right here is one over the variance variance y because we are subtracting the mean of x from all the x values and then computing its square and summing it up divided by n that is the variance and that is in the denominator so the covariance of uh, between x and y x is a feature y is the target covariance between the feature and the target divided by the variance of the features so that gives us to a very uh, small representation for our beta one it is just a constant value then because this is not something unknown this is known from our training examples we can compute this uh, like using some uh, using some uh, stat, uh, like scientific calculator or any other system we can compute the covariance between x and y we can compute the variance then we plug in the values for the beta naught and beta one back into the original equation uh, that was uh, this uh, right here like beta naught plus beta one x one will give us a prediction right so our prediction is beta naught this is this term right here beta one has been replaced by the covariance divided by variance plus uh, the uh, beta one x so this is now our this will be our predicted value this x will be for a particular record and you can see all of the other terms will be constant for a particular training data set so you will have this entire uh, this first term is this is constant because we will have n examples we can compute the mean we can compute the variance we can compute the covariance here again the uh, coefficient the regression coefficient or the slope of the line you can say that is also a constant this x is will be the value that we have to do the prediction for this is this can be some unseen data point and then we will come up with a predicted value of y at that point so this reduces the need for any iterations whatsoever you just do this once like compute the covariance variance and mean at once and then just compute the uh, predict predicted y value and this is the ordinary least square method for the univariate regression and we don't have to do any iteration to find the way the parameters the parameters we take from the data set itself so it also means that our data has to be very correct and also i said in the ordinary least square assumption that it has to have like um, a Gaussian distribution or a zero mean. We have to take that assumption because we are placing too much confidence on our training data now. So our training data has to be correct and then we can come up with this intercept and this slope. Is this uh, understandable up to this point? Then I can move ahead. Because in this reference text, we are using an analytical approach and we are not using gradient descent at this point when we are talking about this particular reference text in this topic is this clear yes okay thank you okay uh, just let me drink some water in between once we are done with this univariate case univariate, univariate linear regression in one variable is done we can come up with the y value for a particular x feature value and we will have these uh, intercept and uh, coefficient that is done now for the multivariate case we will have uh, like a vector for each feature uh, sorry uh, for each for each training example we have a vector for the features so we will have like uh, x1 is a feature x2 is a feature x3 is a feature we will have all of that in this uh, bold uh, this x in bold this is a vector ith vector that i'm saying ith feature vector times some parameters w and uh, yi is uh, like a scalar so yi minus this is this these are this is my error terms so these these are the residuals we have to compute the residual sum of squares so we uh, just in the just as in the univariate i saw uh, i told you that y minus capital x times w transpose y minus x w this is the representation for the sum of squared residuals 
what i am then trying to say is like i'm proposing it to you that uh, we can use some normal equation some normal equation to come up with uh, this vector of parameters w and uh, then we can use that to compute the predictions directly i'm not putting it directly to you right now but like we can use some normal equation uh, then we will have some w from that normal equation we can find that and uh, then we can multiply all the feature vectors with w and then we will have another vector of predicted y values so that is what i am proposing right now for the multivariate case we have to now look at what this normal equation is and this will be familiar to you because uh, we have seen this particular equation in the past as well so to derive this normal equation i am going to start from the cost function our approach uh, remains the same we do not want to do any iteration we want to find the parameters at one shot so we take this cost function y minus x w transpose y minus x w using our identity we take the transpose inside so y transpose minus x times w whole transpose and these terms remain then we expand this out and multiply each term with another term so this y transpose y minus x w whole transpose y then y transpose uh, uh, x times w and then then x w whole transpose times x times w and, and because uh, when we take transpose inside of a product of matrices it uh, order changes so w, uh, w transpose x transpose x transpose w and uh, then i also said to you that uh, the dimensions of x times w and y are the same so a transpose b is equals to b transpose a so we can just say minus 2 times x w whole transpose times y and this will be our cost function now again like the univariate regression we have to find uh, the parameters w which will be beta not beta 1 up to beta m so we have to partially differentiate with respect to all of them again i am saying we have to partially differentiate our cost function with all of those parameters so this is not a, sing, a simple derivative this is a partial derivative because in w there is there are m plus 1 such uh, parameters so we have to partially differentiate with respect to all of them so that is why this representation this is a vector so that just means that we will have this minus 2 terms uh, time right here this will be zero because there is no parameter in this particular this first term y transpose y there is no parameter here it will be zero uh, then because this is constant constants uh, derivative is zero then we will have this partial derivative plus the partial derivative of this term uh, i am stretching it separately because then it will be like easier for us to compute all of them mm, don't be intimidated but uh, like this is the expansion of the first term x times w transpose y if we open it up uh, this will be our x y because uh, x1 x2 up to xm are the features and these are the end training examples we have we are using homogeneous coordinates so we will have, have a uh, like a column of one right here and then we will have this uh, w parameter vector column vector right here we take the transpose of the product of these two matrices and then y we will have this we know this feature vector x is known to us y is known to us the thing we don't know is this beta naught up to beta m so we will multiply now uh, these two and then take its transpose so if you do that you will come up with these equations you will come up with n such equations if you take the transpose and multiply uh, the matrices you will come up uh, will you will see that uh, it is like y some y times this entire uh, sum right here so this entire sum the inner sum can be represented as uh, like the ith uh, the jth feature for the ith training example times the uh, like the uh, for that particular feature or particular feature what is the coefficient 
you multiply that and take it sum that will be this entire row right here these rows right here represent this thing and this uh, y you will have the in multiplication you will have this so this is the entire term that you have to partially differentiate so we will do this individually so the first term uh, if you do this you will have beta naught and x x is all ones right so you will have this entire sum of y's then for the next uh, if you partially differentiate with respect to the beta one parameter you will have the first feature times yi and the sum of that so if you do this up to m and just take a step back and look what it means this is just the multiplication of some feature times the y value right so that actually is x transpose because x is this so if you take its transpose there is a column of sorry there is a row of ones and then we at each row you will have these uh, features and these different values for the entering examples so this is x transpose y that will give us all of these equations if you uh, like multiply these two you will come up with these equations then there is other another term for our partial derivative and it is this one uh, that is uh, w transpose x transpose x times w now i am not simplifying it right now uh, i tried it on paper and it is really long but the crux is like you will come up with a term two times x transpose x w so all in all then you will have this term x transpose x w 2 and minus 2 because uh, there was a minus 2 term right here and you computed this separately so you will have minus 2 x transpose y and plus 2 x transpose x w so this is our derivative of our uh, like cost function with respect to the parameters but we have to solve for the parameter again so we have to set this to zero then we can take uh, two common and then uh, cancel it out and change change the side of x transpose y to the other side and then uh, what we can do is like take the inverse of x transpose x on both sides so it will be identity on the left hand side and we will come up with x transpose x inverse x transpose y so that will be the solution of uh, like this particular uh, cost function with respect to our parameters if we set it to zero we can solve for w the parameter vector as uh, like the inverse of x transpose x times the x transpose times y this equation we have seen earlier and now we have seen how it like it can be derived uh, so now we can use this uh, in for applying this to our multivariate case to come up with this w somehow we know x we know why there is no unknown right here we have all the features we have all the y values so you can compute this but the thing is that the x transpose x is matrix multiplication it is all right but x transpose x may not be invertible in all cases maybe maybe we cannot take its inverse maybe its determinant is zero or something uh, so that can be a thing and calculating the inverse of a matrix is already expensive so if there are high uh, if the dimension is large that means if you have a large number of features then you will have a very large x matrix so to compute the transpose and then multiply and then take the inverse that will be very expensive operation but the trade-off is that you do not have to do any iteration you are getting it in it in one go like you do not have to experiment with any other feature uh, sorry parameter value you will get the parameter value from the data set itself so this is one thing again we have to take the exemption uh, assumption that there is a zero mean and normal distribution now once we come up with this particular w then we can plug it back in the earlier equation for the multivariate regression this w and then we will have we can multiply this with the original features x we will then have some uh, y vector that will be the predict all the predictions for the all the uh, 
uh, features that you give it so that is there so now we have to derive some results out of this multivariate case itself why because the terms x transpose x inverse it is very significant and x transpose y is also significant and again in this linear regression problem we have to like understand the meaning of each such thing because we are not calculating any other parameter right we are placing our all our confidence we are saying that we are fully confident that this will be the parameter so we have to be double sure that this is our parameter so for understanding that we have to first understand some special matrices all of this is this is covered in the text itself within one or two pages so i am just explaining it in a expanded way uh, it is taking some uh, uh, the text is taking some a uh, vector uh, mu that is a column vector of column means so mu transpose will be a row vector containing the means of all the features so for x1 feature you take all the means for x2 you take all the means come up with some mu that will be a column vector and then take the transpose so mu transpose will be a row vector containing the column means of x that is like uh, an assumption that we are taking in the book then we can say that the square of all the means is a capital m matrix that we can denote as mu times mu transpose why because again i am saying that it is a row vector so the mu transpose transpose is mu itself so mu times mu transpose will be the square of all the column means so that is the matrix m second thing is again i am saying for ordinary least square we have to have zero mean zero mean is achieved when we like subtract the mean from all the feature values so we can then feature uh, zero center all the features so if you see right here this is a row vector of the all the column means right so and if i multiply with the like a vector of ones so th there is a vector that contains all ones and then i have this row vector mu transpose then i will come up with a matrix that is also of the same dimension as this x itself then i just subtract all of those features uh, the mean from all of those features from x1 i will subtract the mean of x1 from x2 all the features i will subtract the mean of x2 like that once we have that what we have done we have actually uh, like uh, just subtracted one matrix from another so that does not change our entire data set the distribution is still there just the representation the mean is changed so now we have like a normal distribution the mean is now if you if you now calculate the mean because you have subtracted the mean itself the mean will come out to be zero for all the features so we have uh, like so satisfied what the condition for ordinary linear regression says ordinary least square method says then the text also asks you to assume some scatter matrix that is represented by s which will then provide the estimate of the covariance not the actual covariance itself but like a relation uh, like it will indicate the covariance the scatter matrix s will indicate the covariance between all the features like x1 and x2 x1 and x3 x2 and x3 and then uh, we can come up with the scatter matrix that represent all of this information that is the relationship the correlation between the features so that will be my scatter matrix but the thing is that for the scatter matrix you have to take x transpose x from the zero centered features the features must be zero centered to calculate the covariance between them to like the estimate uh, that thing so we are taking x prime transpose x prime x prime is this thing right here we just subtract the means so uh, i just uh, substitute this term for right here so x minus one um, like we subtract the means from all the x take its transpose uh, times uh, the zero centered data again so then if you like multiply this inside you will come up with x transpose x minus n mu mu times mu transpose that we can then replace with capital m so 
scatter matrix S is will be equivalent to X transpose X minus N M. So you can see this X transpose X term, which was right there in our normal equation, X transpose X, that can be also represented as S plus N M. So that is where the X transpose X will come in. Again, next I am asking you to note down another matrix sigma. That is, I am saying that it, you call it coherence matrix and that can be derived from S. Just in the previous slide, I said scatter matrix S provides an estimate of the covariance. Now I am saying sigma is a covariance matrix that can be derived from S as one, uh, like one over N times S will be my uh, sigma, the covariance. So you can see that the, then the S matrix scatter matrix will just contain the N times the covariance because if the covariance is one, one over N times S, then S, S contains N times the covariance. So then we can say that the Sigma all we have to now look at what are the different values inside Sigma, the covariance matrix, this covariance matrix, what it is saying is like the correlation between the features, right? So first, uh, the first element, the diagonal elements will contain like one, uh, it will contain the terms A11, A22, A33, A44. So that will just mean the correlation between ith feature with the ith feature itself, the first feature with the first feature itself. That just means the variance. That means the variance uh, between uh, uh, the variance in the feature itself. So that I am saying that if it is a diagonal element that is I is equals to J, it will contain the variance of that feature, which will indicate the spread of the values of a feature around the mean. The, all the other non-diagonal elements that, that, is, uh, not, that is not in the diagonal of sigma, the covariance metric sigma, that will contain the term sigma ij, that is the covariance. So if it is not the diagonal, it contains the covariance between the ith feature and the jth feature. So you can visualize this entire covariance matrix as containing a diagonal of variances and all the non-diagonal elements are covariances. The covariance then again, I'm just uh, explaining myself a bit more. The covariance between two features indicates the correlation between them. If those two features are not un un are uncorrelated or not correlated, that will mean that they have zero covariance. So if you say in the naive base classifier, uh, you, you saw that we took all the features to be independent and not correlated with each other. So all of those are independent uh, value, uh, features which have no dependency on each other. So that is they are correlated. So for all of, so for that particular data set, if you take from, for, from the naive base, uh, even though those are nominal values and those are not scalar values, if you just visualize it in that context, you will have the diagonal as variances and all the other elements that the covariances will be zero. Why the covariances will be zero? Because there is no relation between one feature with the other feature. So that reduces the entire covariance matrix into a di diagonal matrix of variances. So that is there. So again, I am saying that positive, if there's a positive correlation, that means uh, if some if some feature value increases, uh, the other feature also increases or it decreases together, that means that there is a positive correlation or positive covariance. If one feature increases, the other decreases, that is the, there's an inverse relationship, that means there is a negative covariance. This is just my definition part for what I am about to do next. So all of these, uh, all of these terms are introduced in the text in one line. I'm just explaining it a bit more. These are the special matrices that uh, we have to consider. To uh, understand the next step that there is a alternative representation for this parameter W itself that is given in the text. Like it is given as a matrix of covariance and variance. To understand that we had to understand all of this. I think there is a chat message, so I'll just check it. Uh, one second. Oh, I did not get the message, it seems. But if uh, there is any doubt, you may ask. I am stopping at this point uh, just for a moment. Uh, special matrices.
are the defense clear up to this point? Because then we are about to do something with these matrices. I'm just proposing you, uh, proposing to you that these are the different terms that we are going to use. That's it. Can you just please unmute and say? Yes, it's understood. Okay, so we have M, we have X prime, we have scatter matrix S, we have sigma. So now we will go into a topic called normalization and why do we need it? Coming again to my point, I said that the ordinary least square requires a zero mean, but we do not usually have a zero mean. So for those cases, first we will take the univariate regression. To apply this ordinary least square method, we have to zero center the feature. I am also saying we can make our lives a bit more easier if you take zero intercept. That means if I take the intercept value to be zero, beta not to be zero, then I have to only find beta one, right? So to do that, I subtract the mean of y from all the y values and to zero center the features itself, I subtract the mean of the features from all the features. So effectively, I convert the entire, I transform the entire data to a zero centered, normal, uniform, Gaussian distribution, whatever you say, because this method is introduced by Carl Gauss themselves. So Gaussian distribution is what we are going to use. We zero center all the features, like if uh, the points are scattered all over, all over, all over the coordinate uh, system. We just zero center it and um, transform the data so that it has zero mean. Again, then I am taking zero intercept. So I am like uh, subtracting all the y values, uh, the mean of all the y values from the y values. So then I, I come up with some, uh, I zero center it basically. The first point is completed. Then I am proposing is if I divide, if I divide all these uh, feature values by the variance of that particular feature. This is univariate, only one feature. So the COVID, uh, so the variance of that feature. If I divide all of the zero centered feature values by the variance of the feature, and let me say that it is x prime of i, then I am saying then the entire data has unit covariance or a constant way. Uh, unit variance or a constant variance that is uh, because we have divided all of these uh, features and the mean itself by the variance then if i calculate the variance of this transformed data set then i will have a variance of one this is just to make my life easier what we did we zero centered so our data set is now zero centered at the mean it also has unit variance. So these are two terms that we introduced. The variance we set it to one and we uh, translated the points basically to have zero mean. Once we have that intercept B, B, uh, B not, beta not, we took it to be zero. Why? Because I just said that if we achieve a zero intercept, so beta not is zero. I only need to find beta one. So if I have a unit variance and in the, uh, like the univariate case, you saw that it was covariance divided by variance, right? Now my variance is one. So for beta one, I will have uh, only the covariance as the term. So the covariance between the normalized feature vector or the features normalized features X times Y the covariance between the normalized features and the target values will be my, uh, let's say the regression coefficient or whatever you might want to call it. This is again, uh, like dependent on the data set itself. I do not have to find any iterations. I do not have to find any parameters. I can find the parameters at, you know, one shot by finding the covariance of the normalized features and y. Beta naught is zero, we forget about it. So my 
normalized do i uh, my prediction this prediction what what we uh, now come up with this will not be in the same scale as the original values we have also zero sent uh, zero intercept we have centered all the y values also so th this y prediction will be normalized value and i have to just come up with this sigma uh, that is the covariance between x x prime and y and x uh, the normalized features now each feature is normalized i will also come up with a normalized prediction this is very important because we may have different scales uh, of our features so and uh, we may not know about the distribution of the data also so what we did was we converted it into a gaussian normal distribution and then we computed the linear regression coefficients or the parameters beta not and beta 1 are calculated univariate linear regression with normalization is done in the multivariate regression we have to take care of all the features and need to like uh, find the correlation whether one feature co uh, one or the other feature has a correlation with uh, the target value or not so we need to consider the covariances between every feature and the target variable so i am saying that the jth entry like in the matrix or the vector x transpose y the jth element of that particular vector that is in the normal equation in the normal equation we have this term x transpose y i am now taking that term x transpose x uh, we have seen earlier that x transpose x is scatter matrix plus nm and i am saying now x transpose y the elements of that are actually the sum the n times uh, the sum of the covariance and the uh, then mean times mean of the features times the mean of the target values y why do i say that because x i j that means for the ith example and the jth feature i multiply it by y i again this entire term right here for one row uh, one element i am considering that is the sum of this term we can rewrite it as x i minus uh, mu j mu j means the mean of that jth uh, jth feature the jth feature and the ith uh, particular training example i subtract the mean value from here and i also subtract the mean value of y from so this just mean i am like transforming i am doing zero mean and then i come up with this uh, like if you divide this by n divide and multiply so this term right here is the covariance uh, this is the covariance time plus uh, we'll have another term that is the mean of the jth feature times the mean of the y values so this is n times this right but i also said that we zero centered the features so this mu j term will be just zero so this term will cancel out because now for the transformed all the transformed values that is x prime we have the mu j zero so this term the jth element in this x transpose y matrix is just nothing but the covariance between jth feature to the target value j to y the correlation between j and y times n so x transpose y is actually nothing but my uh, covariances times n that is what i am saying now in the univariate case we divided all these uh, transformed zero mean values by what uh, by we made it unit variance and i am also saying that now x transpose y contains the covariance in the earlier thing i said that beta 1 can be also seen as the covariance divided by variance right so now covariance is uh, in x transpose y itself then to achieve uh, then i am also saying that to achieve unit variance uh, you can just divide by n and variance of j so you will then have uh, because here also we are dividing by the variance of the particular feature x here i am dividing all of the features uh, by their covariance uh, the by their variance itself so here i can like take uh, because this term will have uh, what you can say the covariances and there is an n right here 
and if i divide all of these covariances uh, n times covariance divided by n times variance n and n will cancel out i will uh, be left with covariance divided by variance that is my particular uh, the covariance divided by variance is my parameter value only right so to do that i take some matrix s so i am saying that scatter matrix s because uh, we are also assuming that there is no correlation between the features so if we do that and uh, like take the inverse so this will uh, like divide all the covariances in x transpose y and we will be left with the parameter vector and if you compare it with the normal equation we have x transpose x inverse x transpose y and again i am saying that x transpose x is n plus nm s was uh, n times uh, sigma or sigma was 1 over n times s so we can substitute that also so what does it mean x transpose x is n times the sum of the squared means m was the mean square and uh, this was the covariance matrix sigma covariance plus mean times n is my x transpose x so this uh, so this just takes the place of this particular s right so we divide all the covariances in x transpose y with the variances uh, sigma square uh, j so this term takes care of it so we can also say that x transpose x inverse takes care of that itself and now to prove that x transpose x uh, takes care of itself we did this like sigma plus m uh, times n so we uh, take that I am saying that if we assume all the features are uncorrelated or independent with each other, then we will have the covariance. All the covariances are zero because no feature is correlated. So then sigma will only have a diagonal that will have the variance. So, and the mean is again, I am saying that the, we have zero centered all the features. So the mean is zero, m is zero, square of zero is zero. So this is just a diagonal matrix. Sigma plus M is just a diagonal matrix of variances times N. So I, uh, this is like diagonal matrix of variances times N. We have this. So then we can just uh, divide X transpose X, uh, X transpose Y. We can multiply that with the inverse of this particular X transpose X that will contain all the variances. So we will have covariance divided by variance as parameter W. One takeaway from this entire thing is uh that the entire multivariate regression problem instead of finding like uh like all of these different parameters doing some complex iteration we just take the covariance of the jth feature of y and then the variance of the jth feature itself and then we can come up with the corresponding parameter right what we did was we decomposed the entire multivariate problem into m univariate problems. Why do I say so? Beta naught is zero, zero intercept that is taken care of. Beta one is covariance divided by variance. Beta two is also covariance divided by variance. Beta three is also covariance divided by variance up to beta m that is also covariance divided by variance. All of these terms are known to us why because we have j we have m features i am talking about the jth feature in this particular uh, covariance divided by variance so for all the features uh, all of these features compute the correlation or the covariance between that feature and the target value then compute the variance of all the feature values you will have that and you will have the beta values or the parameters or the coefficient for that particular feature itself then and there so you don't have to do some uh, other calculations apart from this. So then your entire uh, the beta matrix, that is the parameter matrix, beta not beta one up to beta m, that can be derived from the training data itself. Zero beta naught, beta one is covariance divided by variance of the first feature. Beta two is the covariance divided by variance of the second feature and so on. That is something that we can numerically compute using uh, any algorithm. 
just it is a statistical measure covariance variance these are known to us from the training data we come up with w the parameters from the training data itself so this is the crux of the entire ordinary least square method is like you take the data itself and then try to come up with the parameters to predict the data's uh, whatever it is predict similar kind of data to produce a similar kind of prediction and you learn all these parameters from the data itself so that is our learning algorithm for the ordinary least squares is it clear up to this point at least one part like the only take away if if you even take away 10 to 20% from this it will be fine is it clear yes sir dutt okay so we did this what we did was we analytically computed the, all the parameters of the regression problem analytically using a numerical approach instead of a iterative approach using gradient descent all is honky dory but what happens if the ordinary least square method fails to fails to like satisfy our prediction like if you come if you apply ols the ordinary least square method to linear regression and then you come up with some values that are not correct that is your entire predictions are way off what could be the reason behind that that is addressed uh, by the concept of regularization and in regularization i will talk about the shortcomings of the ordinary least square method that was introduced by goss and then what are the uh, very popular uh, strategies to counter that in ordinary least squares ols we assume these are our assumptions right the features are uncorrelated that means the covariances between the fe between the features not with the target variable that will be there between the features the correlation is uh, zero covariance is zero the data is normally distributed with the zero mean zero centered mean in ols we have to take that assumption also in some of the regularization problems also but uh, we'll uh, skip that but the main thing is that the ordinary least square method does not provide uh, perform well when there is a high correlation between features this is what i am saying so multi collinearity is a thing that means there is a heavy correlation like if you uh, remember the polynomial regression example where one feature we take as x another feature we can take as root x we can also take x square as a feature so there is a correlation between all of those right when there is a high correlation between the features themselves there is a very uh, like a high tendency that our model can overfit on the data so the thing is like for example if you keep on adding features that are dependent on each other you will come up with a very good model that performs well on the like the training set it will cover all the points but the next moment if you give a test uh, value it will not be able to give you, you a good result why because uh, your training and the model has overfit on the training data itself so multi collinearity that means high correlation between the features is where ordinary least square uh, takes a hit the next thing is that if the number of features is uh like greater than the number of observations so you don't you cannot come up with m plus 1 equations to solve the n uh, sorry you cannot uh, you cannot come up with m, uh, m equations to solve the m variables uh so when it happens there is a case of infinite solutions even if you have like learned this from a mathematics class itself when you have a system of equations and you don't have the required number of equations to solve for all of these unknowns you will come up with infinite solutions too the ols suffers from that also so that means it is highly dependent on training data and is unstable in some cases when a such an algorithm is unstable it is likely to overfit uh, when you take the other feature the other points into consideration so we introduce a concept called regularization where we just add something 
add something something to the entire process of linear regression uh here i am saying to the ordinary disk square method itself you add something add some information and i am proposing that that will take care of all our issues it is not a like a so one thing fits all type of solution but it works we add some term regularization term r that i have uh, like denoted in calligraphic letters right here this is the regularization term which then added to the cost function if i then minimize the cost function with the regularization term itself uh, like uh, taking care of that also i minimize this entire thing and take the parameters that minimize the entire thing that will be my uh, parameter vector uh, parameter vector w hat hat because we are we will be using this parameter to come up with predictions so that is why a hat here like beta not hat beta one hat was there in the first few slides so we minimize this entire thing cost function plus regularization term we minimize that and take the argument w the parameters w that minimize it that will be our uh, uh, that will be our parameter vector that we will use for uh, the prediction thing so this is the regularization problem now the regression problem with ordinary least square was uh, only up to this point that is the y minus x w transpose y minus x w and the, we have to minimize that so this is now the regularization problem we will be talking about two times two types of regularization how we can do this like what are the two terms that we can add two types of terms we can add to this cost function to take care of all the multicollinearity and infinite solution issues first will be the ridge regression uh just the name of the ridge regression and just a quick overview of that uh, regularization method has been mentioned in the text and is also in the syllabus so that is why i have to cover that so what why do we call it ridge regression when i am talking about regularization again and what is ridge even ridge regression means a linear regression that is regularized with the ridge method the ridge method y ridge uh, just consider this term x transpose x uh, that contains uh, like uh, x transpose x is nothing but n times sigma right Uh, n times sigma plus m m was zero, and sigma was just a diagonal matrix. So x transpose x uh, contains n n times the uh, variances. So if uh, I take that the, you, there is a unit variance, if I divide all of that by your unit variance, and uh, I am saying that there is a high correlation between features, which means that the covariances are not zero. That we uh, we saw right. in the earlier case that i am taking all the all the covariances as zero because we are assuming that they are uncorrelated so the sigma matrix is just a diagonal matrix here it is not the case the diagonal matrix if i multiply, divide all of that by the uh, like what do you say uh, variance it will have one uh, only one in the diagonal and if there are high if there is a high correlation that means there is a positive co covariance if there is a positive covariance and the diagonal is only one what will happen is if you like visualize it the values that are not diagonal the non diagonal elements are very much larger than the diagonal itself what it means is like a ridge ridge means a v shape uh, in 3d like if there are two hills and you just have a very sharp uh, uh, thing in between so it is a high, very high slope in between so that uh, covariance matrix sigma will have a diagonal of ones and the other values will be very much larger than that so that is a ridge and we have to smoothen it out so that there is not an abrupt change in that particular x transpose x matrix so that is what the motivation behind the ridge method was so we are using ridge to perform regularization on our linearization problem in ridge regression we take the regularization term to be the l2 norm l2 norm is also known as the euclidean distance uh, of uh, the parameter vector times some scalar lambda
so this r term right here this regularization term we can then replace it with lambda times the l2 norm of w the l2 norm of w just means the square of all the terms in itself so we take all the beta i values we square it and sum it up and again using the identity i can say that w transpose w is actually the sum of all the elements squared so this is now our updated problem that this is the original cost function plus this regularization term lambda times w transpose w where lambda is like a scalar that determines how much regularization you can do you can take lambda to be 0 lambda to be 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.1 0 0.2 you can take it like that and then you will come up with the different values of uh, this w hat vector parameters that are obtained from the ridge that is why i have mentioned it as w hat ridge so this when you partially differentiate this again with respect to all the parameters you will come up with a very similar solution that you have already done x transpose x inverse was there here x transpose x plus lambda identity matrix will be there because w transpose w if you take uh, the derivative of that and you will be left with lambda w and lambda w uh, then you will take it common from x transpose x and lambda so you will be left with uh, w ridge or w hat ridge on one side and this entire x transpose x plus lambda identity inverse on the right hand side and again you all know this like uh, all of these terms are computable. You can calculate x transpose x from the data itself, x transpose y from the data itself. Lambda, I am saying that you have to do, like experiment with. It is a scalar that determines the amount of regularization term, uh, amount of regularization. And then, then we just come up with this model, updated model of linear regression, that uh, the parameters is this thing right here, this term. This is the ridge regression solution. Uh, when we use just a small addition to the uh, ordinary least square and then we come up with this updated and this uh, what it does is it makes the parameters a very small uh, something called shrinking it shrinks the parameters so that uh, all the different things that happened uh, with uh, OLS that is the ordinary least square does not happen with this particular model this is one way now I am just, this is the visualization of ridge regression. That is if you have two features, beta one and beta two, they have taken. And because there is a zero intercept, beta naught is zero. So beta one, beta two, and this is like the prediction. Uh, and uh, like this, this is like the, in, in gradient descent also, you came up with contours, like at a particular uh, beta one and beta naught value, you can like come up with these contours. This is this circle is the one thing that is contributed by regularization and this in term is the L2 norm because of the square term and this is also a square and this is also a square so this just uh, a square plus b square and that is also another constant on the other side so this is actually a circle this is a constraint that is put by the ridge regression on your particular uh, method of finding the linear regression solution the other method and the last topic that i am going to touch today will be the lasso regression lasso means the least absolute shrinkage and selection operator uh, in this method we take the l1 norm that is the manhattan distance uh, as the regularization terms uh, like Manhattan, this L1 norm of W vector times the lambda. That is also again some scalar value that you can take. So if you take the L1 norm, that is this is the L1 norm of W times some lambda. L1 norm is just uh, the absolute sum of all the elements. So what lasso regression does is that to be less than a constant. And because of this, what uh, Lasso regression essentially tries to do is it sets some of these coefficients like uh, regression coefficients of some beta values to be fully zero. And uh, like it 
tries to shrink the parameters in such a way so that many terms of uh, from the entire uh, w is will be zero so that means a sparse matrix where the number of uh, non zero elements is lesser than the number of zeros in the particular matrix so that is a sparse solution concept that is only that term is given in the book itself so from lasso regression we come up with uh, some parameters w w lasso hat that will contain a sparse matrix of uh, the different parameters that you can take like this is again another method you can do to uh, tackle the problems of ordinary least squares but for this uh, lasso regression there is no solution that can simply exist just like this uh, x transpose x plus lambda it does not exist so you have to do some approximation numerically like numerical of like you have you must you must have done numerical integration numerical differentiation so you have to do numerical op, uh, approximation to optimize this uh, particular term right here this entire w term has to be computed numerically and not absolutely because no closed form solution exists from the l1 norm we come up with a diamond shaped constraint and uh, these are our different parameters and uh, the this is how our cost function like uh, uh, goes about uh, it is defined these are the contours of the cost function and beta 1 beta 2 uh, are the feature uh, at the coefficients and this l1 norm that we have added in the regression as a regularization term this is the diamond that you can see here with the regression you had a circle from the l2 norm and from the lasso you had a diamond so like all in all that covers the topics that i had to uh, cover today we went over the problem definition of linear regression the motivation behind it and how to represent it using matrices in a generalized way what is ordinary least square uh, what are the assumptions we take how to calculate the solution of a univariate regression problem using the OLS, how to calculate a multivariate regression solution using OLS, what is a normal equation, x transpose x inverse x transpose y, uh, what is normalization, why do we need to do normalization, because we take zero mean and the zero intercept, then what are the problems with ordinary least square in case of multiple linearity and uh, the other thing was there. So therefore, to tackle that, we do regularization. So in regularization, we did using L2 norm and L1 norm, ridge and lasso. There's also third, uh, there are many types of regularization problem, like elastic net is also there that takes uh, L, L2 and L1 norm both and adds it to the cost function. That is elastic net regression. But uh, ridge regression and lasso regression are mentioned in the text. So that is what I will cover. Uh, I have covered. Uh, rather so this ends uh, my presentation on the linear regression using least square method so if there are any doubts uh, that i can take now